Hello, bonjour everyone, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Cyril, I have been a stem cell researcher for quite some time and this is why I can tell you about the science behind skincare. Good. And for today's video, I'm going to talk about Bakuchol or Bakuchol. I don't exactly know how you can pronounce it, but anyway, this is the topic of today. And like I always do, I am really going to go deep down with the science that is behind this skincare ingredient and basically you will have you will know what really science uh, tells about this um, anti-aging ingredient and before i start i want to do a little uh, sunscreen of the day so for two days i am wearing two different sunscreens so the first one is this one i also have a review on my channel about it this is from the front brand svr this is the ckv the spf 50 this is uh, a cream so this one has a finish to normal to slightly dewy this is in my category of what i call hardcore sunscreen and the thing is that, uh, like I said, the finish is uh, pretty dewy and you do need like a solid 20 minutes or something like that to let it uh, really uh, set. And actually one way that I've discovered really recently to matte it down, or at least I would say to make it uh, more uh, wearable, is to simply to layer another sunscreen on top. And for today, I have choose to layer this one. This is the Ali, the extra UV perfect, also SPF 50 plus PA rating of all pluses. In that case, this one is really lovely, but it does hide a white cast. And I don't use um, a full one fourth of a teaspoon of this one. I just uh, apply a light layer over it and definitely it improves the overall uh, look of uh, those uh, of the previous sunscreen. So basically the SVR the second pretty lovely. Another product that I'm uh, currently testing is this one from Uriage. This is the Bioderm, the Sika Lips, the protecting bulbs, and actually it is quite good. It is not uh, as good as uh, the ointment, and I also have a review about this one, so stay tuned because I might do a review in a YouTube or probably on uh, Instagram. And of course, if you want to watch more videos, uh, please consider to subscribe to my uh, channel and comment down below if you want me to see um, more videos. Anyway, the topic of today is about uh, Bakuko, also probably named Bash Bash Bakusho. Anyway, the topic of today's video is all about uh, Bakuko. And what I am going to do is I'm going to give you basically the scientific facts that uh, we really have about it. And uh, because I don't want this video to be too, too complicated, this video also goes with my blog post at cyrillaurent.com and check the link down below in the description box where I will go uh, even further into the science and you also really know like all those studies were uh, conducted and I've also included my bibliography on my uh, website. So bakukul is a phenolic component, so basically it, it is a family of molecules that uh, is uh, quite often found in plants. And this is also from the terpenoid um, family. This is not really important for um, this topic, but anyway, I just uh, mentioned it. And this uh, molecule is extracted from a medicinal plant, which is a uh, patch the batch plant, also known as Soraella corylifolia. And this plant is used in traditional uh, Indian medicine, but also in uh, Chinese medicine. Like in terms of scientific reports, there are um, quite many actually about this um, ingredient, the bakukul, this extract from the batch plant, but they are not about topical action of bakukul. They are only a handful of uh, data on the topical use of uh, bakukul. So it seems that this ingredient improves the liver function. There is also a report that it has antioxidant uh, activity, even though uh, I didn't see any reports really properly done, I would say in vivo. So I cannot comment uh, that much on the potential antioxidant activity. Still, it is in the phenol family, so I would say it makes completely sense. And there are also quite a few reports about its anti-inflammatory uh, properties. And this is actually how this uh, plant, the batch plant, is used in uh, Chinese uh, medicine. Now, in terms of skincare, probably the most 
reports, even though there are only a handful of them, is about its um, anti-aging properties and to the fact that it uh, acts similarly to uh, retinol. And the story starts in 2014 by Shodery and All. And what they have done, they have used an in vitro model of a human skin. It is named Epiderm FT. And like I said, go to my blog. But basically, it is a sort um, of model that aim to mime our own uh, skin cell and they have uh, incubated those uh, artificial human skin with either uh, bacucol at 0.5% or with uh, retinol and they compare the gene expression in those two different uh, batches. So before I go uh, further into the results, I just uh, want to give you, I would say, a simplistic view of what a gene is. So a gene is basically a little piece of our DNA and this is basically a library where we can find the recipe to make a protein. So a good example of a protein is simply the keratin that makes most of um, our skin. Another example of um, Protein is simply the melanin that we also have in our skin to color um, our, our skin. So basically when you are tanning, there is an accumulation of this protein. So the melanin, which is a natural uh, pigment. And therefore when new cells want to make a protein, it needs to go into the library, which is basically your DNA. It looks for the genes that have all the recipe to make um, this uh, protein. And this gene is going to be copied into what we call RNA and the RNA is basically the copy of a gene and this copy is used to make a protein and this is important because in biology the researchers can look at the RNA so basically the copy of the gene that one cell um, basically wants uh, to use or we can directly use uh, or we can directly uh, assess if the protein is there or not and we have different techniques to do this. And in this paper, they have choose to use uh, one technique, which is um, called a transcriptome, or also um, a DNA micro away. And basically, this is a technique that allows you to look at the expression of 30,000 genes. So really a lot. And they compare the expression of the genes with retinol or with bacucol. And what they have uh, seen and what they have observed is that in those cases, bakuko seems to induce the same genes as a retinol, which is something that is very important with those uh, techniques. And this is something that you cannot know if you are not a researcher. And I have actually done those type of experiments, like in my last papers and my previous one, actually, there's also um, a DNA micro array. You always need to validate to validate those results using another technique, which is what we call a PCR. And this is something that is really important because this technique is just there to help you to pick some of gene that might be um, important. And this is something that they didn't do in this uh, paper. What they have chose to do is to look at uh, the protein expression. So basically, if they, uh, they have seen an induction of collagen, with retinol, which is something that is obviously uh, known for many years, but also with bacucol and this in vitro model. And they decide to use the same in vitro model and to see if there is an induction of the collagen protein in this um, model. So they did see an induction of the collagen. I think it was the collagen type one, if I uh, remember correctly. The thing also with this technique is that it has not been done really uh, properly. Properly. So the name of this technique is histoimmunochemistry. Most of the time what we use now currently is with a fluorescent antibody, which uh, they choose to um, not do. And I would say that uh, when you see the results, they are not striking. This is not the type of results um, that uh, we currently see when the technique is uh, properly uh, done. Also a big limitation of this uh, study that it only has been done on those inventory models. And obviously it would have been much better to do it uh, simply on us and to take a little um, graft of our skin, so biopsy, and see if these are not an induction of um, collagen. So this is the limitation. And like I said, I think this is why I have um, 
I would say a better input because I have been a researcher. I have done all those experiments. So I know the limitation and when they are done correctly or not. And here it's not the case. Still, there is a little clinical uh, study also made in this paper, which is interesting. It, it has only been done on 16 uh, people. So 16 uh, subjects, it's definitely not enough, but still they have seen some uh, improvements especially on the reduction on fine lines. And I think it was around 20% or something uh, like that. A second clinical data, and this one is actually uh, really well conducted. And this one has been published in 2018. So like I said, if you want to uh, read what I've just told you, go to my blog and I have all the reference, all the references. And this one was made by uh, Daliwal and all. And usually when I, uh, uh, I said the name of the author. I always mean the first uh, author. This is how you bought a paper. You first say the first author and you say an all and the all refers to the all um, others um, anyway. And in this paper, they have done a really clinical trial for 12 weeks done of uh, done with 50 uh, patients. So this one is definitely more powerful. And what I love about this one is that they have compared the 0.5% retinal versus the 0.5% of uh, bacuchal. So the patients were randomized. So basically they didn't know if they had retinal or bacuchal. And then they have, obs um, they have analyzed, I would say, uh, observable results on uh, only the face. So they didn't uh, look at, for example, the induction of collagen, but they did look at the reduction of wrinkles, also at the overall um, skin tone, the skin roughness, uh, the dryness. They also look at the hyperpigmentation and in all those aspects similar to retinol, they have seen uh, similar results with similar improvement. So as an example, after 12 weeks, they have noticed around a reduction around 20% of the fine lines with retinol, but also with uh, bacuchal. They also observed uh, uh, a decrease of the hyperpigmentation again around 30%. Uh, so. I mean, it is really promising and in terms only on visible uh, signs, so what uh, you can basically see at home on your face, uh, bacucul is really equivalent to uh, retinol in terms of results. And also, like I often uh, told you with retinol, but also in this case with bacucul, you do need time to see um, improvement. And even 12 weeks is uh, pretty short with retinol. You can have like the maximum effect, I would say after a solid uh, six months. All of this, of course, depends on where you start and what you want to um, achieve. If you really want to have, I would say, a noticeable decrease of really uh, deep wrinkles, you need at least uh, six months to have visible results. But again, don't expect any um, major uh, improvement. Unfortunately, we don't have um, the tool in over the counter skincare to give you, uh, I would say, dramatic results, but still it is uh, very nice to get those results. There are also uh, two other studies that has been done on uh, bacucol, where basically they compare the effect of bacucol on uh, your face, again for, uh, in 12 weeks, if I remember correctly, but uh, bacucol was not the only active. It was also combined with uh, vitamin C. Again, if you want to, to know more about the study, definitely go to uh, my, my blog. But overall, I would say um, it makes sense. There is also one report about the effect of bacucol on um, acne. And what they have done, they have uh, tested the effect of uh, bacucol ginkgo biloba extract and also mannitol and they have seen an improvement in acne in conjunction with adapalene treatment and adapalene it, want, it is one of uh, the, the drugs that is the most prescribed by a dermatologist when you are suffering from acne and adapalene is a synthetic agonist of uh, tretinoin that is a bit less irritating than uh, tretinoin but it is as efficient as tretinoin to treat um, acne. So I would say that the whole idea that bacucol has similar effect of retinol is overall pretty um, accurate. The only thing that you still need to remember is that in terms of induction of uh, collagen but as well of elastin of uh, hyaluronic acid and also all the other uh, key proteins and sugars that you have deep down in the dermis. This has not been done properly. And for now, we are definitely lacking any clinical data on 
us. Also, nobody, uh, to my knowledge, has looked at the cell proliferation that we have in the epidermis, but also in the dermis, because it is well known that when you use retinol and also a retinoic acid, akaha tretinoin, it does uh, induce the proliferation of the epidermal cells, but also from the dermal cell, which is mainly uh, fibroblast. So this also we don't know. We also don't know if it thickens the overall epidermis because it is quite known that retinol, but also uh, tretinoin thicken the um, epidermis. So I would say that for now, it is partly true that a bacucol is a, um, an alternative to retinol. One main advantage of bacucol compared to retinol is that um, you can get similar um, results in terms of what you can observe, like the reduction of wrinkles or hyperpigmentation, but you don't get all the irritation that goes with retinols. Still, remember that with retinol, you have, I would say, a sort of a learning curve in the sense that you do need at least one to two months to really tolerate the effect of retinol on your skin. And definitely starting with uh, a bacucal product to start to build this tolerance and then transition to retinol is definitely a great um, idea. So this is why that overall I would um, always recommend, especially in terms of anti-aging, if you want to have like the whole uh, package, I would say, I would still recommend retinol over bakukul because we simply have more um, data, especially in terms of induction of all the um, collagen, elastin, and etc. in the dermis. This is not something that you can really observe um, at home. You, we, you do need uh, to make like a proper scientific experiment to know if you had this induction of those uh, important uh, dermal uh, proteins. Which is why I, um, I always uh, recommend this product from Dr. Sam. If you are not new to my uh, content, you will know um, that I rave about the Nike Serum from Dr. Sam Binding. And the reason is because in addition of having Bakukul, you also have a new derivative in the retinoid uh, family, which is uh, Granactive. And what I love about it is that those two ingredients have a retinol-like or a retinoic acid-like effect on the skin, but they are definitely lacking any proper uh, scientific study, especially for the collagen induction. And this is why it is so clever to have combined the two because you simply have more insurance that they do um, indeed uh, increase the collagen production. And the main advantage is that they are, um, is that this serum is simply less irritating than a retinol uh, product. So comment down below and tell me if you have any question relating to uh, Bakuko. I am also thinking of doing another video uh, simply about uh, Grand Active to really give you what we uh, really know like currently, so basically today. So like I said, go to my blog at cyrillaurent.com if you want to have like all the nerdy details about uh, Bakuko and also uh, all the bibliography. If you like this video, please thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and show the little bell to not miss any of my new videos. You can also follow me on Instagram. I am Cyril Laurent. I have a lot of stuff uh, over there. I, of course, thank you so, so much for watching me and I will see you next time. Au revoir.